I love building cars that actually get used. I am not a guy that builds cars that I like to see sitting in collections. I love nothing more than for a customer to give me a call, tell me that they uh, just got through driving their car for three or four hours and got it filthy dirty. My name's Rod Emery, I drive a 1957 Porsche 356 Speedster. This car has been a race car since the early 60s and had a pretty rough life. Banged fenders and spun out and hit hay bales. A good friend of mine brought the car to me in the late 90s and said, hey, let's bring this thing back to life. And so I stripped it down and went through the entire car and uh, now we end up with a, a car that's both amazing to drive uh, on the street and still very competitive on the racetrack. first thing that we did, because it had lived a pretty rough life, is we disassembled it completely. Structurally went through the chassis and strengthened the chassis itself. Built a new roll bar for it to kind of mimic the way that the bar was that was in it in the early days. It had a single hoop. Had to put a new nose and tail and new fenders on it because the, the original sheet metal that was on it had been repaired so many times. So once I got the body back into shape, then you know it's all about the components and putting the right parts in it. And this particular car has some pretty cool suspension. And I wanted to make this car work good both on the track as well as uh, be drivable on the street. One of the things I did is uh, put an adjustable center section in the torsion tube to allow me to put the car on scales and be able to dial in just like you would a coilover car. The motor is a 1620cc motor, but uh, produces uh, roughly 135 horsepower, so still slightly streetable um, and uh, a race motor that, you know, we can get 50 or so hours out of before we need to freshen it up. So I've been building 356 Porsches for a little over 25 years, but my story really started 70 years ago. My grandfather, Neil Emery, had Valley Custom Shop. He was really one of the pioneers when it came to channeling and sectioning cars. The art of taking the car and keeping it so that it looks like a factory car, but it's just much more streamlined. And it's always inspired me because it's something that drives me every day to build a car that looks like it's an evolution of a design rather than you know, a heavily modified car. It was really a good home for my grandfather because he was, uh, in my opinion, one of the, the greatest car builders of all time. He had three sons. All the boys went into the business. My dad always wanted a Myers Manx dune buggy. Uh, he had an opportunity to buy a little 56 oval window rag top that had been crushed front and rear and took it to my grandfather and said, hey dad, you know, can we turn this thing into an off-road car? So they cut the nose, cut the tail off, put front fenders in the rear, painted it yellow. That was the birth of the Baja Bug. So you can kind of see a trend in my family that, that it's collaboration to create cool things. And so at an early age, I was building cars in the back of my dad's parts shop. And then I had my grandfather that taught me how to manipulate metal and how to do body work and how to do paint. And then my dad that had this incredible eye for design and ideas, doing that uh, on all these 356s that everybody thought were sacred. While everybody else is pulling lint out of their air cleaners, my dad and I were painting numbers on the sides and putting Nerf bars on them and lowering them and polishing the drums and doing trick wheels. All of his friends would call us the Outlaws and that was the birth of the name 356 Outlaws and how Outlaw kind of stuck to Porsches. I went from building cars that were more GT inspired to what I call my Emory Special Cars which are heavily modified bodies but looking like something Porsche would have built in their special build department. 
I have all these tools like a big Eckold power hammer and a Polmax power hammer. And those are all tools that came from the same era that these cars were built. But I also have the old school hammer and dollies. And in fact, a handful of the dollies and hammers that I use came from my grandfather. Uh, that's how I'm able to kind of tie back to my roots. He was building cars. He didn't have any of the big fancy tools. Uh, in fact, you know, they did a lot of their work on an old uh, stump of wood. And so every day I'm, I'm humbled because I look at the cars that they built with the limited tools and knowledge that they had. We decided to focus more on building exceptionally special 356s. So some of the stuff that we do on these cars to refine them, for example, on the bumpers, when I'm fitting a bumper to a, the front of an A coupe, Porsche allowed for a little bit of that variation when they made stuff by having a little bigger gaps between the bumper and the body. But when I'm building these cars, I like to make things a little bit trimmer and more refined. So oftentimes I'll take the bumpers and bring them closer to the body and I'll refine that edge so that I get a nice even reveal between the bumper and the body. One thing about this 57 Speedster that's really uh, close to my heart is that this is the last car that my grandfather, Neil Emery, helped me work on. I was putting a nose and tail on it. You know, we could have TIG welded it, but my grandfather wanted me to gas weld it. So he sat there with me on a stool right next to me while I welded the nose and tail on this and, you know, told me the things that I was doing right and doing wrong and taught me a few techniques that I didn't know. One of the cool features on the Speedster is uh, I like to louver most of the cars that I do. And on this particular car, I did a set of reversed handmade louvers. And so they're actually hand cut and then rolled and hammered. All of this really comes back to take a design, look at it and see how you can evolve it, but make it so that all the components and pieces that you're putting into it blend together and you can't necessarily pick out what has been done, but as a whole, you know the thing's been modified, but nothing really stands out to you.